Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of PK's Lab. Sorry it's been kind of quiet on the channel. Um, was busy vacationing, flying, you know, the usual summer stuff. Um, hopefully everybody had a great summer too. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you got a lot of FPVing in. Um, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, hopefully you're getting, uh, having, getting your fun time in now. Now that things are cooling off up here and starting to warm up down there. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's get to the fun stuff. Um, so I was on this Facebook group, Facebook group, sorry, uh, long range hooligans, uh, pretty cool group, lots of people posting back and forth. And I saw a couple folks had, uh, gotten some preliminary hardware from Maytech, uh, Maytexas, sorry. Um, and this is one of the units, the Maytexas VTX 1.3G. And it's going to be the focus of our uh, video today. I emailed them. I asked them, Hey, if I, uh, pay for the pre one of these pre-release units can you get a semi one I said sure 45 bucks all right plus shipping it's like all right cool so they gave me a, a vtx or i bought a vtx and a vrx and we're going to cover these in separate videos just because it'll be um, easier to keep them keep them separate Duh. all right so without further ado what do we got here uh the specs claim 28 dbm uh six to 36 volts in it's got a onboard mic, which is kind of cool. Also has an audio input and uh, five volt out for your camera. And looks like it's got a blocking diode, reverse polarity protection diode. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm, I'm not gonna blow this one up yet since it's my only one that I have so far. Uh, it's nine channels. I will we'll look at the channel list, output powers and everything in just a moment, as soon as I get all my equipment set up. So, uh, yeah, let's get rocking and rolling, make some measurements. All right, see you on the flip. All right, he's back with all the screens. I apologize, the video here in the lower right-hand corner of me talking is going to be delayed because I don't want to spend a boatload of time setting this up. I just want to get this done because I've got other stuff to do. All right, enough talking about that stuff. So, you got the VTX down here in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. You can see the spectrum analyzer kind of up, oop, up over there. And we got a Google Sheet stack up here with some results. So you can see it's kind of cool. It's got nine channels total. And we can see what they've got silk screened here on for the channel and frequency and actual measured power output. Now I do want to point out that these measured power outputs were not actually measured with the spectrum analyzer. I use a resistive power head to make sure that any anything funny in, or inaccuracies in the spectrum analyzer don't show up. It's actually a legit power measurement. Um, so all the numbers, the, the VTX actually meets the spec. It's 600 milliwatt VTX um, and everything's above it. And the nice part is it seems to be able to handle just sitting here all day long um, and the output power doesn't drop. So, um, so far, at an initial look, it, it's a it meets all the specs it's supposed to meet. Um, so let's see what we got for power consumption. So around two and a half watts, rounded up for 600 milliwatts out. So not terrible, not great. It, I mean, that's kind of, you know, the power amplifier has to be linear because you've got the audio coming out. And it, anyway, long story long, it's perfectly fine. Um, temperatures, I probably should get a temperature monitor on this but it's feels cooler than our normal 400 milliwatt jabbers um, so they did a pretty good job so a couple things to note uh, in this design I believe they run uh, the PA off the 5 volts directly and there's probably some filtering and I'm not going to dig into it right now um, just because I want to keep this going um, so actually let's take a look at i did a little quick brownout test so basically i took the input voltage and uh, dropped it down measured the current so we could see when the power consumption drops and also looked at the actual transit power and as it started to roll off um, and also monitor the 5 volt rail so you can kind of see as the 5 volt rail starts going down the transit power starts going down with it too. Um, the synthesizer inside of this device unlocks at four and a half megahertz. 
Um, so definitely don't go anywhere near there because um, you're going to have a bad time. All your video cuts out almost immediately. Um, so don't do that. Rule of thumb, 6 volt volts really should be your lowest that you run this, this at if you've got a noisy power supply. Don't go below it. All right. So what else we got? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. The audio carriers. So there's two audio carriers, one at 6 megahertz, one at 6.5. Um, those are the relative power levels in DBC, so minus 25 or 27, and you can kind of see that. And you can see the one that's wavering as I talk here is the one for the onboard mic. Um, so the 6.5 megahertz one is the onboard mic, and then the 6 megahertz is the one that you feed in via the pen. Which is cool, very cool. Um, it does present a little bit of a problem. Sorry about the delay, old man thinking. Um, a lot of our kind of like legacy VTXs put the audio carrier on five and a half megahertz. Um, so we'll have to look at the video receiver. Well, the silk screen says that it pulls off audio at six and six and a half megahertz. We'll have to confirm that that's actually the case. Um, We'll do that in another video. So basically, for a bench rundown, uh, this VTX actually looks pretty solid. You know, power consumption's reasonable; doesn't get hot. Um, I think for fun, uh, I was going to say maybe I'll leave it. We'll, we'll cut this off here. I was going to get all anxious and excited and be like, "I'll let it run overnight with without an antenna plugged in to make sure it doesn't blow itself up." Um, I'm going to save that one for another time because I actually want to fly this BTX. Um, oh, another kind of thing you can see they've got a URRX and TX labeled here. Um, so maybe they'll have smart audio. Uh, it's a, a Cortex M0 on here. So definitely very good hackability potential. All right, we're back. Nine-ish grams with my janky wires hanging on it. So it's definitely less than nine. This is nice. It's not a heavy, heavy little transmitter. Um, that's with SMA on there, so that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I got to show you guys the interface for changing channels. Give me just a second to get things hooked back up here. So power on. Oop, there it is. So you got to press and hold this guy for bit of time and you can cycle through and the interesting thing is uh, you'll note that he stays on the same frequency he was on last so let's pick a different one that's 1160 and that's when it clicks in so you know, hold it and now we are on 1200 when it flashes there it is and it seems to have like pretty good it's not microphonic like some of our other VTXs, you know, when you, you ping them, you can see the, the thing moves all over the place, even though it doesn't have anything that <laughs> should be moving. You're, you're kind of pushing the, the reference oscillator back and forth, or maybe something in the VCO it has like a capacitor that's sensitive to the vibrations or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I like this so far. Yeah. Can't wait to actually put it on a wing um, and see what, what we get. So, all right. Hopefully that's enough uh, information. I'll be back at some point here in the future with a review of the video receiver. We'll probably do like a sensitivity measurement and maybe an intermod test or something like that. Um, it's super exciting to have another source for these 1.3 goggle modules because these um, next wave ones have kind of dried up and um, they have some limitations, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up with this for folks that just want to go down to a park and maybe not push the distance uh, like they would with a ground station and high-gain antenna. But, you know, you got your fat sharks and you want to fly around the park and not lug a bunch of stuff. Will this be good enough? Let's find out in the next video. All right. Till later. See you.